Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Firsty. So today, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, which I highly, highly recommend, um, it is just me on this episode. It is a Mila only, host only episodes, and I hope you guys don't mind. Before we get into this episode, and I know you guys can see the title, as always, I'm going to say thank you to anyone right now who's watching, listening, subscribing, commenting, liking, doing all the things, sharing, all the things, messaging me about the content. I really, really do appreciate it. It means the absolute world to me. I cannot say that enough. I think we're at 26 or 25 or 27 episodes, and every single time I'll say it over and over again. I really am grateful for anyone who's engaging or watching this content. It really does mean a lot. Um, one thing I want to say, comment down below or message me or anything, any topics or ideas that you um, would want to see or listen to, I'm always open to hearing um, hearing you guys out. Um, now that we're done with that, and then of course, please make sure, as always, um, please make sure to be following, um, subscribing, Firsties Pod everywhere, but following Firsties POD on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, we're everywhere, Facebook, everywhere. Um, so you don't miss short clips behind the scenes, um, all that fun jazz. All right, so as you can tell from the title, we are going to be talking about the struggles of first of being a first gen. Now, I, when I was prepping for this episode with my um, producers, I have to be honest, I was a little bit nervous um, about this episode. I think it's because, um, I mean, I started this podcast, Firsties, because I think being a firstie is like a badge of honor. Like it's very, it's dope. I'm proud to be a firstie, a first gen. I am very proud about my upbringing and the people and the family that I, and the culture that I come from. But like I've talked about in other episodes before, even when I launched this podcast, there are some things that are not so fun or uh, that come with some trauma or some pain um, or doubt, um, all the not so fun things about being a human being when it comes to being a first gen and coming from an immigrant family. So, um, I thought it was appropriate just to have host only on this episode, uh, just to share some of my experiences, uh, without going too much into detail. Um, and when I was prepping for this episode with some of my producers, we did some research, um, to see like what's out there, like what is being said about that experience of being a first gen. And, um, there was quite a bit. I was actually really shocked with how much is out there. Some of it is like so painful and sad and some of it is really relatable as well. Um, so I jotted down some notes here. So if I'm looking at my phone, it's because I have some notes here. And um, it was just so interesting how almost everything I could truly relate to. And that's what I'm hoping this episode is. I'm honestly, that's what I'm hoping that this podcast is just for you to either relate, laugh, be entertained. That's always my goal when I have content out there. Um, with this particular effort episode, um, I am asking for some grace um, as I'm going to be sharing some things that not might might not everyone might not understand um but uh, it's my experience and kind of my feedback on kind of the struggles of uh first gen of being a first gen now before we get into this this is a completely different topic but really quickly just because it's timely and I just binged it if you're watching love is blind season six I mean let's let's talk about it really quickly that that whole season is so I, <laughs> I recently went to go visit my brother and we were just hanging out. I literally just went for the weekend, just to hang out with him and spend time with my brother. And, um, if you've seen this episode before, I highly recommend it, but uh, I forced him to watch Love is Blind with me. And of course, just like any guys out there, like they're first like, oh, I don't want to watch this. And then like, he really got into it. Like the tea, the drama, the, the key key of it all. And, um, there was one quote. The thing that like floored me was that when that man, I'm not even going to say names because you guys, if you guys have watched it, you'll know when that man told that woman, um, as long as you don't change, I will be happy. I thought that was like, we're talking about marriage, right? And so he's saying like, as long as you don't change, if you're this exact person, I'll be happy. Now, I'm not married. Sound out in the comments, whoever is married, if you want. But isn't marriage like an agreement that we're going to go through life together, which means we're going to grow and change 
together. So like literally he's not under, it was just that comment alone. I don't know why like triggered me almost. And I was just like looking at my brother, like, did he really just say that? And I'm like, that is a crazy way to like start up this journey with uh, this person. Anyway, so comment down below what you guys think of Love is Blind. It is actually insane. I cannot wait for the rest of the season to come out. Like I cannot wait. Anyways, so let's get back onto this topic. Sorry, my ADHD. Um, struggles of a first gen. So the number one thing that when we were doing our research, and by research, I mean like videos, YouTube videos, TikToks, Reddit threads, um, articles as well. I did read one like research article um, from what school? University of Pennsylvania. Um, and it was just, it was literally just like, it had, you know, statistical information on just the experience of the first gen, which I thought was very interesting. I didn't really read too much into it, but I got a little glimpse of it. Um, so the first one is, and I could definitely relate to this, is there's a sense of guilt when you are a first gen and anyone who's listening to this who is, you just kind of know, um, there's, there's little room for error. Something that's really, really pushed to us is education. And so you feel like you can't make that much mistakes. You kind of have to figure out what you want to do at the age of freaking 10, it seems. Um, by the time you graduate, you have to know what college you're going to, um, what you want to do with your life. It's a lot, right? It can be a lot for someone who's literally a child. Like I went through that. Then there's a sense of guilt. And what I mean by that is as of right now, as a 27 year old, anytime I'm having like a, a lot of fun, whatever it is, whether it's my, with a new experience or with my fa or with my friends, or when I'm just away from my family and just having fun and experiencing like just this life of a 27 year old in America, there's this guilt that I think about where like, man, I don't know if my parents will ever experience this particular fun, whether it's like going to a specific landmark or, you know, being the first to, uh, like, you know, something's running that came in my head that I haven't actually experienced, but like driving in a really, really, really nice car or whatever it is, or like flying first class or whatever it is, these kind of like luxury things or things that necessarily first gens or immigrant families don't actually get the opportunity to do, whether it's lack of resources or there's a lot, especially that, um, immigrant families deal with. Um, there's this guilt that I feel when I have all this fun. So I, I, when I was doing this research, I found that like, oh, that's why I FaceTime my mom. So little backstory. So like any time at all, if I'm really enjoying myself, whether it's like a fun dinner or, you know, getting drinks with my friends or whatever the case is, it could be shopping, whatever the case is, I usually call or message or FaceTime my mom or my parents just to be like, hey, come like look at what's happening because they kind of like live vicariously through me. Does anyone else feel that way? Because I I tend to do that a lot, especially in this new season of my life. And I think I'm trying to combat the guilt of like I'm having so much fun while like the reason the most fun my parents had was they've had their fun in their life, of course, but like they came to this country that they, they had the major sacrifice of moving here away from their family to like give me and my siblings chance of a great education and just a greater life. And um, they didn't necessarily get the the pleasure of, you know, going down the street and getting a couple drinks or dinner with their close friend because they're all most of their close friends were back at home at a time. Um, then, you know, some family members came um, over with them. But um, that was one that was like across the board with the research that we did that like the guilt of having fun or just the guilt of being a first gen, you just don't feel like you deserve this quality of life that your parents worked so hard for you to have. Like, I don't want it any other way, but still there is this like guilt. So um, still working through that, comment down below if you guys have any feedback on that. The next one is there's pressure of making it and also paying it forward or I don't say paying it back because I will say shout out to my cousin, Naomi. Uh, one time we were at dinner and I was expressing like something about like, oh, like I can't wait to pay my mom back. And like my cousin simply put like, girl, that's not possible. Like she's she's your mom. She's he's your dad. Like there's no way you could pay your parents back. Um, the best thing you could do is take care of yourself and just be a, a kind human being in the world. But there's no way that you could 
love your mom more than she loves you. It's like a whole other profound love, which I absolutely agree with. But the pressure of making it. So I saw another TikTok video where they were sharing how, like, you know, sometimes first gens, they don't feel like their life is their own because they do feel as though they need to become otherworldly or it's up to us to, to stop the generational curse of whatever generational um, um, uh, habits that happen in our family. Like that's a lot of pressure to put all what this generation does on one person. And the, the simple, the simplicity of just being or just existing is just like, seems like it's not enough um, from being a first gen because back to that major sacrifice that our parents did to get us here. And so, you know, that pressure is very real. I know we, I, we've talked about this in an episode before with Leaf, one of my other guests on the show. Um, it's just a lot of pressure. It's a privilege for the life that my parents have granted me, but man, is it pressure to like take the torch and do something even grander, whether it's like, I, like I mentioned before, you know, paying it forward or paying it back. And um, all first gens, they have a dream of like paying their parents' house off or like, just making sure that parents have no more financial like burdens or anything like that. And man, that's a lot of pressure. Um, recently I was watch I listened to a, an interview with Trevor Noah and he said the best gift that his mom gave him was, um, the fact that she just, he, his mom allowed him just be, she said, I don't expect anything from you. You don't have to be otherworldly. He happened to become a very successful host and comedian, of course, but even before then, he just did it because he loved it. But she said, there's no pressure at all. Um, and I was just thinking, not that I would wish that, but man, I don't even know what that world is because there is this pressure of like, you have to make it. You can't make the mistakes. You have to make the right choices for many reasons. But um, there's that pressure, which sometimes isn't so much fun. The next one is um, the struggles of being a first gen. Um sometimes when you are chasing your dreams and your goals and they're truly your passions and your goals, I'm talking from like being an artist and being a creative for whatever reason, my brain tells me that it can be, it feels selfish. And what I mean by that is by allowing myself to want to be in the media space and be a host of a show and, you know, push out content six days and six times in a day um, you know, over 30, 40 times in a week, it feels kind of selfish because that, that is necessarily the dream that my parents had, although they support me and I am very blessed in that manner, that wasn't their initial dream for me. Right. Um, I'm sure they want me to be a nurse doctor, just the very basics. Anyone who's a first gen or, you know, the, the base or the, the very standard or very safe, secure jobs that our parents would want to have. And so by chasing my dreams of wanting to be a host and be on, on camera, sometimes feels a little silly and feels a little selfish, if I'm honest. Um, and I definitely have to like quiet that voice in my head because uh, I'm learning that I am not my thoughts. Those are just thoughts because um, two things can be true at once. I'm also learning that as well. But sometimes it just feels selfish. Comment down below if you feel that way as well. I'm interested. The next one that I found from even doing some research is um, at times you were always in the state of transition when we're dancing between these, these two worlds. That is literally what the show is about, right? Being a firstie is, can be challenging between being an American and growing up in this country, but then also trying to hold on to your heritage and culture. I was later to that game as well, if I'm honest. But there are times where when I'm with my family, um, I s understand I'm adding up pretty well, but I do not speak it. Uh, I could kind of survive in a very basic conversation, but for the most part, I don't speak it very well. And, um, if I'm honest, sometimes when I'm with my family or certain family members, it's n it has nothing to do with them. It's just me. I either feel like a fraud or I just feel like I don't know my culture enough because I don't know. I can't read and write in a modern yet or I don't speak it very fluently. Um, and one of my biggest regrets is not fully being fluent um, in my language. Like, that's just such a bummer for me. But um, and then also when I'm with sometimes with my American friends or let's say in a professional environment where I am one of the only black or brown people in the room, sometimes it's tough for me to connect with that environment 
because I'm not American. I obviously was born somewhere else. So it's just always a state of transition. So it's like for first gens, where are we supposed to feel like we belong, right? And I'm learning in this next chapter of my life that where I feel like I'm the most confident, the most helpful, the most productive, where I feel like I'm serving other people is in these creative spaces. Um, and so that's why I'm really, really getting comfortable in this seat, which I'm very excited about. Um, and so, yeah, it's just that struggle of trying to dance between those two worlds can be very difficult sometimes. And I feel you guys out there who are going through that, especially when you're younger, because you don't know that you're doing that, right? When I grew up in a high school that was actually pretty, pretty, um, it was pretty, for the most part, it was pretty diverse. It was still the like underlying like activities and stuff like that were very much Americanized. And I just had to conform or try to do my best to fit in. Cause at that age, it's just easier to fit in than to stand out, even though I completely feel like it should be the opposite. I just didn't have the balls or um, um, I just wanted to be in with the crew. And uh, even though I just never felt like I really was, no one made me feel that way. I just didn't ever feel like I was because I was trying to dance between those two worlds. And I'm learning that you can't serve two masters. Like just sink into who you are, how God made you to be. Everything else will work out. I'm learning that so hard now. Um, but that's tough when you're when you're younger. The next one is interesting. I definitely relate to this. As a first gen, I'm like side camera right here. Um, as a first gen, spending money sometimes can be challenging because you just don't feel like you're worthy of spending that money. I come from an environment where save, 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 like save for a rainy day, right? Save, save, save. So when I'm, whether it's, for someone like myself, if anyone knows me, I will pay for convenience every, like seven days out of the week, 10 out of 10, I will pay for inconvenience. Now, of course, let's be realistic. Like if you have the means to, of course, I'm not getting like ridiculous, but you know, like for things like if I Uber eats my dinner, right? Like I don't necessarily need to do that. Like I could go pick it up or I could make food at home. I'm sure my mom would want me to do that. Um, but I'm thinking of it as convenience. I have to edit two podcasts tonight and then I have a dinner or then I have work or whatever. I don't have time to make food and clean it up and all that stuff. This is such a privileged conversation, by the way. But I, um, I'm like, no, I'm going to buy Uber Eats, even though I'm overly paying for, you know, the food that I'm getting. Um, sometimes there's some like guilt or guilt there in the back of my head. I'm just like, I really shouldn't be doing this. And it's because I just grew up in a time where save all the resources that you have. Like I just saw my parents save, 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 and just be very strategic on where they put their money. Right. Um, now of course that, that results in us having a comfortable childhood. I will say that. So shout out to my parents for making those wise decisions with your money. But, um, I definitely think like it's it I have an interesting relationship with money and I'm trying to rewire my brain to like of course save but also like enjoy yourself if you're working hard if your bills are covered if you're able to give back and then also get something nice for yourself why not life is short um but I feel like sometimes I think oh I'm not worthy of nice things or I'm not worthy of this very nice trip because I'm just supposed to save, save, save. But it's like, girl, you're not going to take it with you when it's all said and done. Like, enjoy yourself. And now's the time in your early 20s to, like, try things, explore things, you know, travel, all those things um, before you actually have people depending on you, whether it's a family or, you know, whatever the case is. So, or whatever your, your family needs as well. So spending money is an interesting one when it comes to, like, first gens. We have some kind of guilt there sometimes. Um, the next one is guilt as well. I feel like the overlaying like common thread is just guilt as a first gen. So much fun being a first gen um, is moving out. Now, this is when I I did not realize um, I'm a recent person who's moved out of my family home or my childhood home. But um, I am part a lot of us as first gens are part of the boomerang generation, which is we went off to college. Once we graduated and got the degree. The market. Every single time someone graduates, the market is shit. Every single time. There's never a good time where it's like, oh my God, they're really hiring, right? It's like a nightmare every single time. 
And so we moved back in with our parents because we don't have the means to kind of like fend for ourselves yet, right? Student loans start to kick in and that is real. And so shout out to anyone who's going through that. And so then um, we're, we moved back in with our parents, just like a boomerang, right? We come on, we come right back. And there is this common thread that I've seen on social media where first gens, children who come from immigrant parents or immigrant families, we pay our rent with living with our parents with our mental health. That is real. That is the realest thing out there. Now, when I had the means to be able to move out, I did. And here's the thing, though, that's so interesting, is that that's how life is supposed to go. There's a moment where you do, not always, but there's a moment where, like, my parents worked hard enough so that I could take care of myself, make my own decisions, just be a kind, well-rounded person, maybe have a family one day, all the things. And so that that's the next step of just life, right? But for whatever reason, maybe it's because I'm the baby of the family. When I moved out of my parents' home, that was a tough decision for me. Simply but I simply put, I was happy to do it. Like I knew this was the right decision. Also, I wanted to. But for whatever reason, I felt as though I was leaving my family behind, which is not true at all, but that's how I felt in the moment of, you know, as first gen, we're, we're technical support for our, our family. We are the translators for our family. We do the documents, you know, submit documents for our family. Just make sure all the logistical stuff are taken care of and moving out, it, you know, you create distance from that resource with your parents, even though obviously I'm always still in contact and I'm literally, couple, you know, minutes down the street from my parents, but Still, like, that was a tough decision. And I would, you know, have these conversations with my friends who are in debt, who do not come from an Im- immigrant family. And they they didn't have that experience. They were like, 18, deuces, I'm out. They did not look back. But for someone like myself or someone who grew up in the same environment as me, first gen is what I'm saying, you do have this guilt for whatever reason. Um, and you just feel like you're leaving your family behind, which is not true, but that's just the guilt that comes with being a first gen and then finally moving out. Like this is a great thing, but I wasn't able to really celebrate it for the most part because I was just concerned about leaving my family behind, which again is just not true. Again, guys, this is a host only podcast. Uh, Be sure to comment down below and let me know if any of this resonates with you. I'm really, really interested to see. The next one is I talked about it before on the episode with my brother, um, growing up as first gens, we see our parents give everything, everything that they had to their job, which probably isn't the most passionate thing that they're doing, right? This isn't something that they're getting creatively or anything like that. It's just a job to, um, put food on the table and make sure that we have a warm home, right? Now, um, in my experience, all I saw was my parents at the end of every day depleted. They had nothing else to give. And it just seemed like in order to be deemed as working hard, you had to be physically and mentally exhausted. So for me, when I have a day, maybe creatively, and it was not challenging, but I did work and I did do some some work, um, if I'm not physically or mentally exhausted, I work some more until my brain hurts. And that I'm learning through therapy. That's not, that's not, you're going to burn out first of all. And also that's not the way to go. But all I know is work hard means you work till you have nothing else to give. And obviously that works in certain ways. I've spoken to athletes who definitely have that mentality, but I've learned that I really do think the best thing my parents gave me was my worth ethic. They did not, they didn't give me a fish. They learned, they taught me how to fish, which I think is really helpful when it comes to just being an independent and like sufficient individual, like I'll be okay. But it, you, let's talk about my mental health. Where are we at with that? Right. Um, and literally I'm going to, I'm going to laugh about it because if I don't laugh, I'm going to cry. Um, that's life hack. Um, first gen life hack. But, um, yeah, that's one thing I've learned as a struggle of being a first gen is that like work hard, that that is built into your brain. Um, and I definitely have to work on like rewiring that for 
sure because if I don't do enough things in the day like for example I'll definitely share this and be vulnerable with you guys COVID tough time for everybody um uh you know I definitely want to be mindful of you know there's people who've lost loved ones to the pandemic it was a really tragic and scary time for someone like myself staying at home being still was a tough a uh, tough time now all of this is like subjective of course but um this is all first world problems but it was because I was had to be still and I wasn't being productive if I wasn't able to like go into work and be productive and be helpful in the world I was like who's Mila who like I had an like an identity crisis almost and had to rewire my brain and I still fail at that sometimes as well about um my you know my identity lies in my productivity, which can be dangerous because as a human being, you have to be still sometimes. You can't always be going, going, going. And I can't tell you the amount of times I burnt out and I'm still learning that. Um, and that's just the struggles of being a first gen. I feel like this episode's like, isn't it fun being a first gen? Don't you want to be a first gen too? And then um, last one I have here is um, there is no like exploration process when it comes to being a first gen in my experience there might be some out there of course some outliers but for the most part there is no like figuring out what you want to do and if you're going to do it you have to do it quietly because saying like oh I'm going to try this and see if this works I'm people in my family they just don't have it just seems as though there was no room for that conversation it was like you had to figure out what you wanted to do at the age of 16 as your SATs get into that school because all of this was leading up to you getting a college degree like let's talk let's think think about that for a second you came to this country for this one thing that was what was built into into my brain which was like okay you have to do good in middle school because then you'll be able to do great in high school you have to do great in high school because then you have to take the SATs you have to take the SATs because you have to get into a good school and you have to get into a good school because then after a good school you get a good job and once you have a good job, you're able to fend for yourself and have a good living and an income, right? Um, it was all towards this one thing, graduation. And that is why I will always talk about that postgraduate blues. Because imagine you've worked, worked so hard for this one thing and then you did it. And then it's like, okay, now what? And it's never what it seems, right? So I think one of the struggles of being a first gen is that you just have to figure it out. And that's such, now I'm learning that's such a joke. There's no figuring it out. There's 60 year olds who still haven't figured it out, right? None of us figure it out because it's life, being a human being can be ghetto. It is so ghetto to be a human being sometimes. Again, if I don't laugh, I'm going to cry. Um, well, I did not think this episode was going to go here. But um, so there are struggles that come with just being a human being. And even for myself, anyone hearing this, I hope you get to the stage of being able to even say it out loud or even recognizing that you've gone through this. Like everything I've talked about in this episode has not currently happened. This happened when I was younger because when you're in the eye of the storm, you don't know that you're in the eye of the storm. It's years later when you're out of it, you're like, oh my God, the amount of confusion, self-doubt. You were just trying to do your best as a 16-year-old or 18-year-old or a 22-year-old. And you're still figuring it out. And now I'm learning to give myself grace, even as a 27-year-old now. When I'm 30, I'll be looking at this particular episode maybe. And I'll be like, oh my God, girl, you were just trying to figure it out. And I probably won't agree with half the stuff I'm saying now, right? But again, the whole point is growth, is to figure out like who you are and who you want to become and who you want to be. And uh, the struggle of a first gen is that there might not be that much room to one, vocalize it, but also just even feel it. Like you have to figure it out, which is why a lot of us go into these very secure, very impressive roles, which are medicine, law. Um, I feel like the one thing is medical, really, like nurses, doctors, surgeons. Like it could be optometry, it could be an orthodontist, whatever, but just something in medicine uh, because that industry, even though it's changing, it's a safe and secure job. We'll always need doctors. We'll always need nurses. Um, but do we always need a podcast host? I mean, maybe firsties. We'll always need the firsties podcast host. I'm just saying. But um, that's not necessarily something that the world um, will always need, right? So um, we fall back into these kind of habits and this blueprint of what works because of maybe the lack of resources that our family has or that a lot of us do not have like a plan B, right? Like the simple reason why 
the way that my family came over here and they figured it out and we were able to have a comfortable lifestyle is because there was no plan B. Like my family moved here away from their close friends and their parents um, and their culture and was like, we got to make it. We, we, we sacrificed a lot for this one decision of moving this country. So however it works out, it's going to work out. And that is one thing I'll always say is that once they put their mind to something, they definitely do it. And their worth, I think, is something that I noticed. And um, I also want to point out, a lot of first gens will relate that it was never for me, it was never a discussion of how hard you have to work. I just saw it. Um, it was just an example of what I saw, how hard they work, the amount of hours they put in in a day. 16-hour days, my parents would work. And then they would come home and still be a parent. Like, huh? I don't know how you will be able to do that. Um and so the greatest gift that they gave me was believing in myself, but also um, for sure their worth ethic. So again, being a firstie, it really is the dopest thing about me. Like it really is. And um, it's a badge of honor, I'll always say. That's why I want to start this podcast to be like, let me have other firsties come on here and let's talk about our experience and how cool and dope we are. But it it's it would be irresponsible of me to not share also the parts that are just not fun or the parts that like we need to work on or change when it comes to the next generation that we're going to raise. Um, because sometimes some of it is painful. Some of it is not necessary. Um, some of its stunts are growth also. Uh, there are many things, right? So, uh, again, I hope that you take this episode and give me some grace and take it with a grain of salt as well. Uh, this is sometimes, I always like to share like my experience, but I know others can really relate. Um, but it, again, it always, it is always coming from love. Uh, because again, I love my culture. I love, absolutely obsessed, love my family. But again, there is a reality of some things that we've all experienced. And I hope this is a safe space for all of us to kind of share those experiences. So for this episode, I really, really want to plug, please comment down below what you guys think what you guys agree with, disagree with. I really want this to be like a forum of discussion. Let's just all have a discussion about our um, what we can relate to in our experiences. Because um, then I just think it just makes it a little less scary. And I just, I would want this space or this platform to be a safe space for the younger generation. Because again, when I was 16 going through what I was going through, I wish there was firsties out there uh, to be like, oh my God, oh, okay, I'm not alone. Oh my God, I relate to this. Yes, the guilt of moving out or the guilt of choosing happiness over your fa your parents' dreams for you, that's a tough, that's a tough one. Um, there's a reality with all of that. Or also, just to go back, understanding that what your family goes through has nothing to do with you and you might not be placed on this earth to fix it. Sometimes you have to let people go through their pain and not try to fix it. Sometimes we can be fixers. Um, especially depending on your birth order as well. I was a baby, so I was just always like trying to make sure everyone's having fun and doing a quick dance, so everyone's happy. Um, and so I could have a, I have a people pleasing complex sometimes, and that's a lot that comes with being a first gen. Um, so that is it for this episode, guys. It's kind of a short one, but I kind of want to go into detail of again the struggles of being a first gen. The struggle is real. Um, please again comment down below. I'm really pushing the comments for this episode. What you guys think. Um, what you guys agree with, disagree with. Again, I'm open to all of it. Again, um, take this with a grain of salt uh, and give me some grace. I always mean this with love with anything I put out, uh, content I put out. Um, so please make sure uh, to comment down below. As always, like, subscribe, comment, do all the things. I really, really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. As always, I'll see you in my next episode, guys. Take care.